Huh. So this is Storm Terror's lair. Hmm. From which direction will Storm Terror appear, I wonder? Um, excuse me. Who's there? Oh, uh, sorry, sorry, I, I didn't mean to disturb you. I apologize as well. I acted on force of habit. You must be a local, yes? My name is Sino, and I'm here sightseeing in Mondstadt. In truth, it is I who am disturbing you. Um, might I ask if you're looking for something here? I'm waiting for Storm Terror to arrive. You even set up a camera? Yes. I hope to capture a good picture as reference material for an artist I know. Oh, in that case, let me help keep watch too. From what I've heard, Storm Terror's movements have some regular schedule. Hmm. Roughly how often does it appear? Uh, hold on. I'll have to check against our data first. Let me consult my notes. Hmm. <clears throat> um, Mr. Sino, sir, are you going to stand there staring into the sky the entire time? Don't worry, I'm quite strong. My neck can take it. N no, no, I, I mean, you should sit down. I, I brought a blanket. Here, you can borrow it. I'll be all right. Oh, um, okay, well... Huh. Weird. Now I'm staring up into the sky, too. Whoa! Did you two see that? A bird with huge wings just flew by! If Master Tainari was here, He'd be able to tell you its scientific names, species, and behaviors. But, as for me, all I can tell you is it isn't a species we have in Sumeru. Oh, then what kinds of birds do you have in Sumeru? Dust birds! They have the most beautiful, vibrant colors. The feathers on their chest are the color of ripe sunsidias, and their wingtips are the color of tender mint leaves. They're not too skittish around people, and at my tree hop, I mean this tree that I often go past, there's a dusk bird there that always looks at me like it understands what I'm saying. I once picked up one of its feathers from the ground. It felt really nice. You have keen observation skills and a love for living things. You'd be better served directing your energies there, rather than sighing and whining all the time. <sighs> Eula says things in the most awkward way possible sometimes. Just ignore the second half, Kali. No, it's fine. I know what she means. She does have a point. Are you hungry for fish? I see quite a few over there. Sounds like someone's up for a fishing contest, huh? Fair warning, though. I won't lose. Seriously? Another competition? I thought we were supposed to be sightseeing. Uh, but still, wait for me. I've heard that Cecilia's only grow in remote spots at high altitude, and that you're unlikely to ever see one unless you go looking for it. Though they can be preserved for a long time as specimens, I can't take back the beauty they possess in the wild. It's a shame. Shall I ask Sucrose to develop a Cecilia variant with improved soil adaptability for you? I should warn you, though, it may very well end up with a name like... Tetratanic Ananimo Cecilia, or perhaps Epsilon Series Cecilia Variation 601 Sumeru Growth Type. Is this you attempting to tell a joke? Unfortunately not, I'm being completely serious. In that case, I look forward to... well, whichever of those two it ends up being. Back to our previous topic. If you wish to use antitoxic compounds from calla lilies in an antidote, then I have a few suggestions. Oh. 
Oh, hey there, traveler. Nice to see ya. <laughs> well, Sino's out of the country on a trip, so he got me to come and help his subordinates take care of a few things. I guess you can say I'm his temporary substitute. The atmosphere around here is not too bad nowadays, so I don't mind sticking around once in a while. You've probably got a lot going on yourself, I bet. Good luck with everything. Sitaria. You should take a break and have a bite to eat. Sitaria? Ah, uh, thank you. Sorry, I was completely absorbed in what I was doing. I didn't even hear your voice. Oh, it's alright. I'm glad that you enjoy the work you're doing. Sorry you've ended up having to babysit me. I'm sure you have far more important things to do. Well, Rahman's busy with the Eremites these days. But having me stand in as your bodyguard must be a welcome breath of fresh air for you. It's a change for me, too. My first time working as a bodyguard. I'm just treating it as a chance to get a taste of Dia's line of work. I tried telling Mahamatra Sino that I can work unsupervised. Really, this ought to be the last of his worries. He said that educators willing to work in the desert are an extremely rare breed, so I need a bodyguard for protection at all times. I think he's being a little overprotective. But, at the end of the day, that's why we know we can count on the General Mahamatra. He and I are of the same mind in this case, so I am very happy to protect you. While you're in Aru Village, we're partners. We don't want to cause you any unnecessary pressure. So please, try to enjoy your time here. Why, if it isn't my underclassman, Sino. What a pleasant surprise it is to see you in Mondstadt during the Windbloom Festival. Greetings, Lisa. Though I'm sure you've been aware of my presence in Mondstadt for some time already. Oh dear, looks like you've seen right through me. But I was in no hurry. I knew we'd see each other sooner or later. Yes. It's just as Professor Cyrus said. Shared aspirations always have a way of bringing people into each other's orbit. <laughs> he always has such a poetic way of wording things. I suppose that's the one respect in which I've taken after him. While in your case, yes, it's his wit and eccentricities that have left their mark on you. Hmm. I'm not sure that describes me very aptly these days, given that I'm now the General Mahamatra. Still, if we're going to talk about ways with words, I think my deadpan humor is far superior than our professor's. Is that so? Strange. I heard that you're just Sino the Adventurer when you're in Mondstadt. <laughs> you make a good point. What do you think of Mondstadt during this time of year? It's quite nice, isn't it? Yes, it's very nice. I think I'm starting to understand your reasons for leaving the Academia. <laughs> I've always prided myself on making wise decisions, and that was certainly one of them. If our professor had been as sensible as you, he would have had a much easier time in his working life. Being stubborn doesn't help anybody. Well, if even you feel comfortable criticizing him now that he's retired, it really goes to show how much he's changed. Stubbornness is an all-too-common vice among scholars. I hope that never rubs off on you. I'm always happy to see you visit Mondstadt and experience the feeling of freedom for yourself. I heard the latest news about Kale, too. No doubt the traumas of her childhood will persist for a while to come. But I have to say, she appears to be doing quite better this time than on previous visits. I suppose you're something of a mentor to her, aren't you? Now that I think about it, the two of you aren't so dissimilar. The power of Hermanubis once brought you great suffering. That's all in the past now. Besides... Professor thankfully didn't treat me like a test subject for the priest's power like the higher-ups had hoped, even though I was a desert dweller. 
Instead, he gave me the tools I needed to lead the life I have today. He adopted me, educated me, taught me how to fit into society. I am very grateful to him. You are very gifted, and sometimes that can become its own curse. But he has reason to be grateful to you too. Without you as his son slash student, he may have never changed his stubborn ways. As a fellow student of his, I couldn't be happier for the two of you. Well, look at how quickly this developed from small talk to a deep and serious conversation. That's one thing I do miss about my academia days. By virtue of being another of his students, you are as much a part of Professor's family as I. It's perfectly natural for a daughter to inherit her father's conversation style. If you say so. I suppose that means I get to call you baby brother from now on. Um, uh, I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> yes, there's the baby brother I remember. Into the wind! You like the card back from Sino, right? I must admit, I also spent a good amount of effort coming up with a design. His request was quite... Uh, interesting. He wanted a dragon, a cool pose, and a design that would stand out and awe his opponents. Although the commission was for himself, he wanted the back to be flashy enough to draw the attention of the opposing player. Perhaps... There's something that can be said about how, when it comes to genius invocation TCG, friendship is more important than competition. He also said that such an impressive card back should be shared with friends. Since he gave it to you, this must mean he considers you to be a close friend. Oh, and speaking of, to repay my efforts, he also gifted me the card back as well. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe I'll also give the game a try. Kale! Sucrose! I brought some home-cooked food. Why don't we enjoy it together? Really? Sounds great! I... I must point out a small issue about your cooking. You have a tendency to put a little too much flavoring in your dishes. <laughs> uh, sorry. I guess I've been a little heavy-handed with the seasonings lately. Are you feeling stressed recently? Do you want to find someone to play cards with? It really helps with stress. I promise. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. If I recall, both you and Sucrose are pretty good players, right? Oh, yeah, we are. We've been playing together, and we were actually talking about this just a few days ago. Since you are already familiar, would you mind also showing me the rules sometime? Yeah, Kali seems to be a natural at the game. Maybe she's already the best player out of all of us. Huh? Me? That's right. You've been all talk at the tavern. That little girl from Sumeru is really good at the game. If I can find the chance, I would love to test my skills against her. Really? Isn't that great, Kali? You've become a TCG celebrity. Oh, I... I... <laughs> I quite like my new card back. It goes perfectly with my deck. I take it you've also received your card back? Want to use it to play around? Time to go! Well, what do you think? I trust you've enjoyed this year's Windbloom Festival. I'm happy to see you find the time amidst your busy adventures to return to Mondstadt and celebrate the winds of freedom with us. And if you have a moment now, would you care to hear a new love poem I wrote this year? <clears throat> Allow me to recite it for you. 
This world has never seen such vibrant color. It bestows upon everyone a brilliant hue. A shade more ethereal than white, yet more radiant still than gold. It eases into your eyes and restores to light a solitary soul. Hmm. Maybe a bit too somber. <laughs> Uh, maybe I should write another one on sweet flowers instead. Am, am I? Am I dreaming? Uh, Miss Ying Art, you really came all the way to Mondstadt to see me? Why were you willing to make the trip? I still can't believe it. <laughs> Why wouldn't I want to come see you? It's not like a quick trip from Liyue to Mondstadt is completely unheard of or anything. Also, isn't it time for you to drop the miss and just call me Yingar? Oh, Yingar. Mm -hmm. Yingar. <laughs> I, I, I think I still need some time to get used to calling you that. <laughs> Look at you, already so flustered. And we're just getting started. Uh, no, no, I, uh, I... Uh, I'm just overwhelmed with happiness. Thank you so, so much for coming to see me for Windbloom. Leaf clover. It's so pretty. Do you like it? Huh? Is it for me? Thank you, Clee. Um, could you also say something nice to Clee? Oh, of course. <clears throat> I've actually gotten really good at this. Oh, Miss Clee, our mighty spark knight, you are the flame of hope for all of Mondstadt and the vessel for. Huh? What's a vessel? Oh, no, uh, Klee doesn't seem to really appreciate this kind of praise. Uh, okay, then. Klee, you're super adorable, and your hat and backpack are the cutest. Uh, did your mom get them for you? Yep. Mom said that she picked them out with Dodoko, and Dodoko really loves this backpack, too, which is why Dodoko's always hanging from the side. Mom also said that someone else was also helping her pick out the gifts that day. Uh, hmm. What was the name again? Ah, if Klee remembers correctly, people would call her the Old Hag. Wait, the Old Hag? Huh. Okay, well, now that you mention it, the Old Hag does have a fondness for picking out hats. Thank you so much for your surveying tips. I had no idea that the Sumeru Forest Watchers would also have expertise in this area. <laughs> you really do know just about everything. It's only natural that Forest Watchers and Surveyors would have some similar skills. We're both constantly outdoors and on the move after all. Anyway, I'm glad I could help. If I can find a chance, Oh, I'd love to pay a visit to Sumeru as well. I've heard that the terrain is quite complicated there, and it'd be a treat to see it for myself. Yes, complicated is indeed one way to put it. Visitors often get lost when they visit Sumeru for the first time, and they have a tendency to pick all kinds of mushrooms and fruits in the rainforest without discretion. Ah, uh, we get a lot of people here picking philanima mushrooms as well. Actually, have you ever tried adding them to a recipe? They are quite bland by themselves, but perhaps the taste can be improved if they're cooked together with other ingredients. I've never tried that myself, but now that you mention it, I do want to give it a try. I'm quite curious too. Would you like to pick some together later? <laughs> 